I'm wearing sneakers that are embroidered with the Spread words C and sell for okay. Caesar, Caesar salad. Why? Because sea salad is my favorite, is one of my wow. favorite dishes in the world. That's intense, Molly. Anyway, um, there it's spelled wrong, which is kind of annoying because my husband f***ed up the customization and didn't realize it, but I still think it's commitment. Four elements to the perfect Caesar salad. The dressing, made from scratch. The croutons, made from scratch. High quality Parmesan cheese. And tossing the salad with your hands to make sure that everything gets coated evenly. To start, we're gonna make our own sourdough croutons. You could use any kind of uh, country loaf. I wouldn't go for a white bread or anything that's too flimsy because you want something sturdy that can really hold up to the dressing. So something like this will work well. About an inch thick, and then I'm gonna tear them by hand. That way they have all these craggy bits. I think the beauty is in the imperfection in these guys. All right, so for a Caesar salad that would feed six people, I'd say three cups of croutons. That's a half a cup of croutons a person. And also, if you have extra croutons, that's really not the worst thing in the world. Day old bread is preferred here because it's already dried out. I'm just gonna coat these in extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper, and then just a quick tossy toss. All right, this is going in the oven at 375 for 10 to 15 minutes. This is technically a mayonnaise, but that shouldn't scare you away because there are a lot of different elements in it that are gonna help keep this emulsion bound. And so it's definitely not as difficult as just trying to make a mayonnaise from scratch because you're adding in egg yolk, mustard, and garlic, and those are all binding agents. A little trick that I like to do when I'm making a mayonnaise by hand is to put a towel down on my cutting board, nestle the bowl into the towel. That way it doesn't budge while you're whisking vigorously. I'm just gonna juice this lemon. This recipe calls for two tablespoons of lemon juice. So I'm just gonna chop these six oil-packed anchovy fillets, smash this clove of garlic, and then I'm gonna add a pinch of kosher salt to it, which will act as an abrasive and help me turn it into a paste so that there's no chunks of garlic in the dressing. And then I'm gonna do the same with the anchovies with a little bit more salt. Same idea. Paste is in the bowl. Bowl is locked in place. I'm gonna add two whole egg yolks, three quarters of a teaspoon of Dijon mustard and about two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. Oh, my croutons. Whoop. I burnt my croutons, yes. Yeah, I'm gonna let them go a little bit longer. Just whisking all this together until it's homogenous. Little by little, a drop at a time, olive oil. And whisking constantly so that we don't lose the emulsion. And now I'm gonna to switch to a more neutral oil because if I were to use only olive oil, it'd have a pretty strong olive oil flavor and we're looking for something a little bit more neutral to support the rest of the ingredients. If you look in here, you can see that there are no oil droplets that are unsuspended. If it were broken, there would be some liquidy stuff, all suspended with olive oil and you would be able to tell. It's gonna lighten in color as well because we have egg yolks in here which are dark yellow and we're adding something clear to it and we're whipping air into it. And I think it's really important to have the egg yolk in here. It's what makes this dressing creamy and not just a vinaigrette. Do you see how it's light in color? See how it kind of holds its streaks? It's thick, it's creamy. I'm gonna add in now three tablespoons of Parmesan cheese, whisk that in. And since there are not that many ingredients in this dressing, it's kind of important that you get high quality cheese. Okay, a good Caesar always loves a lot of pepper. So, you can do this to taste. 
a little bit of salt, although the anchovies had a lot of salt in them, as, do the, as does the Parmesan cheese. So you don't need a ton. But we're gonna check and see if the croutons are ready. Oh, look at that, they are. <laughs> Golden brown and delicious. Okay, so we'll let these cool while we grill our romaine. We have three romaine hearts here, which are the crunchiest part of the romaine, so it's best to start with romaine hearts for a Caesar as opposed to the whole head. I'm gonna cut them all in half lengthwise through the core so that they stay intact on the grill. So core, leaves. I'll put them on here. And I'm just gonna lightly brush all of them with a little bit of olive oil before they go on. Not too much because I don't want them to flare up, but just enough to get the char going and then season with a little bit of salt. All right, let's go to the grill. Oops. So I'm just gonna char these on one side only. The goal here is not to cook the romaine so much as it is to establish a good char on one side and leave the rest of it pretty fresh so that it still eats like a salad. So I'm not gonna flip them. I'm just gonna let them get charred on one side char on a crisp, crunchy, watery lettuce, like romaine, kind of adds an awesome depth of flavor that you can't get without the grill. Beauty, beauty, oh, whoops. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I like to add my salad dressing to the bottom of my bowl. Um, I'll add about half of it in. That way I can spread the dressing all around the bowl and it can help evenly coat everything. And I'll add only half of it just in case there's too much because you can always continue to dress a salad but you can never undress a salad. I'll do a couple of these at a time. So I'm just gonna toss them into the bottom of this bowl and lightly dress them. And then here's where the fingers come in, helping to get the dressing in all the little leaves here. So clean hands, it's no big deal. I like to leave it whole like this, it's kind of a knife and fork salad, and then everyone can take one half of a heart. Okay, and then croutons go into the remaining dressing to get dressed as well. So I'm gonna just use the rest of the dressing to dress the croutons, because that will make them that much more delicious. I think I might have made too many croutons, and I don't hate it. And last but not least, some beautiful big shards of parm over top. And a little bit more black pep to finish. Okay, so there's the finished beauty. Like I said, it's a knife and fork kind of a salad because everyone's gonna get one half a romaine heart. So this one's for me. It's actually a pretty awesome way to eat a salad with a knife and a fork. Delicious. Andy, do you want some Caesar? Andy? Do you want some sea sal? No, get your own pork. This is BA's best Caesar grilling Grill. edition. My you got God. it, you know. You know I just craved grilled romaine. Said no one ever. Oh my God. <laughs> I love grilled romaine. You would, you're so weird. Oh my God. It's not, it's really good. Whatever, it's delicious. <laughs> You're such a hater. The croutons are perfect. Thank you. And I dressed them, you know. We made our own croutons, we made our own dressing, we dressed with our hands, and we got good quality Parmesan cheese. So we basically mastered VA's best Caesar salad.
so much content.